and welcome to As It Comes, live from a musician's point of view. I'm Davina, I'm a freelance cellist based in London, and I'm at home. Well, I'm always at home whenever I'm recording these links, but I'm at home because since the last time I did one of these, the world has become a very different place. We're three months into a brand spanking new decade, and large parts of the world have gone into lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We're realising in a short space of time how many elements of our daily lives we take for granted, such as giving a friend a hug, meeting up with mates for dinner and drinks, going to a concert and sitting next to a person, using public transport. The list goes on and there isn't anyone or any aspect of everyday life that isn't affected by this. I think what shocked me is how quickly this has all happened. Two weeks ago, I happily did a concert of Mendelssohn's Octet with my lovely friends, I remember we had that usual chit-chat about what we had coming up. Concerts, tours, teaching and the like. My sister happened to be in town that evening on a work trip from New Zealand. She came into the venue two minutes before the concert started and I gave her a hug. Remember those? Later on, a whole bunch of us went out for dinner where we sat tightly packed around a table with pizza and wine. From the very next day, pretty much all the components of that evening were to become an impossibility. Concerts, tours, all live events swiftly got cancelled or postponed. Venues closed their doors. Strict travel restrictions were placed. When my sister eventually got back to New Zealand, she had to go into self-isolation for 14 days. In fact, she's still in self-isolation. Restaurants locked up and people started to realise that being in close containment with others was not the way to go. And then, well, you know what happened next. The only thing remaining from that evening is pizza and wine, and I am clinging strongly onto that one for dear life. There are so many things I could talk about regarding this current situation, but I don't know where to start. Probably because I'm not alone in feeling really weird at how quickly everything has changed. From having multiple engagements each week to literally zero, with our future sources of income totally up in the air and staring down the barrel into the unknown, It's no wonder myself and a lot of my peers are feeling anxiety about the whole thing. But one thing I have noticed and will say is that it's bringing out the goodwill in people. Showing appreciation for the people on the front line and key workers. Staying in touch with the good people in your life. Saying, take care to a stranger and really meaning it for once. At least we know we're all in this together. My guest this episode is Rocio Bolaños, and this was recorded the day after COVID-19 was declared a pandemic. It shines a light onto a time when we didn't really know what was going on. Things were starting to get cancelled and people weren't sure how seriously to take everything. I mean, after recording, we went to the pub and had dinner and drinks. Remember the pub, that wonderful establishment? (laughs) So just keep the timing in mind when listening to this. But I hope it'll make you look back on old times fondly. I mean, it was literally two weeks ago. (laughs) Or maybe it'll give you hope for when we come out of this situation. Oh gosh, wait, what does she do? I should say. Rothio is a clarinetist who does a lot of experimental music and improvisation and works with Distractfold Ensemble. Have a listen. All right, you comfortable? Yeah. You want a cushion or something? No, I'm good, good, good. I have cushions. You have, cu- you have, you have nothing else, but I have I've got cushions. <laughs> <laughs> We're in an empty, in an empty room. <laughs> okay. Making me sound kind of destitute here. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you are very, very welcome. You are the first podcast guest I've had in my new flat. Great. And we are pretty much in an empty room, apart from just my odd belongings. I say mine. A lot of them are marks as well. But at least you've got a lovely view of the street outside. I love the sign on the street that says, please keep the gate away clear day and night. <laughs> yeah. Lovely view. Yeah, you're really setting the scene there. Yes. Yeah. And we are currently operating, sitting on garden chairs from uh-huh. my garden, which actually don't belong to me. Very comfortable. I'm sorry, I can't offer you a sofa. It's all right. Yeah. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Welcome to my flat. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. Thanks for coming all the way to South London. Yeah. And how long again did it take you to drive? Uh, an hour and a half. Wow. Yeah. I teach all over London and also outside London. So I'm always in my car. Oh my gosh. Eating in my car. 
listening to music in my car, listening to this podcast in my car. Oh, I'm on it. So you, you drive listening to my dulcet yeah, tones. Sometimes, oh, thank yeah. you. Not all the time because, you know. No, 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 no. That would just get a little bit creepy, wouldn't it? Like, you know, slow down. Speed limit is only 30. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 20 around here, anyways. Oh, is that? Yeah. Oh, there's a school there. Uh, yeah. I see. Yeah. I see. What have you been up to this week? You mentioned teaching. Yes, I've been teaching and I've been uh, dealing with this new coronavirus situation. Oh, no, but not you personally. You don't no, actually have not coronavirus. Me, but like upcoming events, tours, gigs that are currently being postponed or cancelled. So it's a little bit sad because especially I had a, a tour coming up in a couple of weeks in the US and I was very, very looking forward to it. Mm. Yeah, I was just very, very excited about it. And suddenly, I mean, I, I was sort of preparing myself, but there's nothing you can do, no? No. A lot of musicians are, well, artists are in the same situation. Exactly. Self-employed yeah. people. Yeah. Because of this force majeure, or however you say that word, yeah. clause, and how if something gets cancelled because of a pandemic, yeah. such like coronavirus, yeah. you won't get paid. Yeah. And it is a huge worry for us, isn't it? Because it means that... Because our income is so unstable anyway, and if yeah. we lose the things that we are looking forward to, yeah. then we could get really stuck. Even teaching, yeah? because you are self-employed, self-employed as well. So it's a little bit scary, but yeah, I'm getting emails every day from schools I work in or private students I've got. So I'm trying to find the way of like just making it work. So for example, teaching on Skype, I know it's not the same, but... You know, at least you can carry on doing weekly lessons yeah. for these students. And then schools, I, I really don't know. Everything is nice sort of in the air at the moment. So Have you had any schools closed? Not yet, but I've got a lot of like warning emails from schools that are like, be aware that this might happen in the next week or yeah. so. So yeah. I've had a lot of signs go up in my teaching rooms and in the Did hallways, <laughs> like how to wash your hands. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sing happy birthday All, twice. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's, it's great. It's great for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> you should make up your own thing. Like, you know, sing, sing the exposition of this piece that you're learning. Oh man, no, no, that would <laughs> not work. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, yeah. It's a bit scary, but I'm just trying not to think too much about it and just keep, you know, keep yeah. going. And I think exactly that's all you can do. Really, is just to keep going with yeah. life. And I think a lot of people forget that because they see things in the media and then yeah. they freak out. Yeah, Don't because they? it is very scary, what they say. <laughs> very, very scary. So Stock up on toilet paper. Oh, gosh. Yeah, <laughs> there's no go there. <laughs> I mean, funny story. Like, I've been in the last four days, I think I've been to the supermarket twice, and I couldn't find a single toilet roll available oh, no. <laughs> to purchase. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but anyways. <laughs> people were just going absolutely mad, aren't they? <laughs> I imagine that people would have gone crazy for another product but it's toilet paper Mm. this time it's just like in terms of music i mean like any other arts it's quite tough to be a musician in the city and if you add this on top of it then it just becomes (laughs) it's like a huge mountain you have to climb every single day and you never see the top of the mountain and now it's even worse so um, yeah i'm i'm sort of like waiting around and see what happens yeah it's tricky isn't it because a lot of what we do relies on mass gatherings of people Mm. such as concerts yeah teaching yeah lots of different things and if we're not able to do that if we're not able to bring people together literally Mm. then we can't do our jobs yeah i'm sorry to hear about your tour it's all right is there (laughs) it will be i mean i think i will we will come back at some point so yeah it's just There's nothing you can do. Lots of bands, lots of uh, concerts have been cancelled. At least my tour is going to be postponed. It's not going to be absolutely cancelled. What happens to people that have bought tickets already? Uh, I have no idea. But, I mean, if you are in my situation where you can actually have uh, travel insurance and things like that so you can get the money back or Mm. rebook the flights in the future and things like that, then it's not too bad. And uh, I will be working with organizations in the U.S. So they will facilitate things for us because it's not really our fault. So, you know, yeah. Exactly. So, but yeah, I don't really know people that bought tickets already. I think they will lose the money, I guess. 
That's so sad. Yeah. I don't know what it's like because I hardly go to anything. Really? <laughs> well, you should. I should. <laughs> don't tell me what to do. Well. <laughs> Yeah. No, I well, I just yeah, I I haven't had time to go to concerts recently. Yeah, that happens in this city. It's always very busy. And oh. there's so much on. It's quite overwhelming, isn't it? Because <laughs> I kind of keep laughing isn't during it? this Sorry. during this podcast. <laughs> but it's nice because sometimes you will be like, oh, you know, I live in London. Yeah, it's one of the most eclectic cultural yeah. hubs of the entire world. Mm. I should really go to some concerts and definitely when I first moved here seven years ago I felt like I was quite on it Mm -hmm. and did that until I got really busy more on that later Mm -hmm. um but now it's just it's just quite daunting sometimes yeah it takes a lot of energy Mm -hmm. you have to really like it's same with when like meeting friends I know it seems and it sounds stupid but it is really difficult to like how long have I mean I haven't seen you in like a year and a half yeah or something, which is, is silly but it's also because we live on opposite ends of london true so for those listening rothia lives in the northwest of yeah. london and yeah, i yeah. live in the southeast yeah so and as you said it took you an hour yeah. and a half to drive here yeah and it can just feel like a really daunting prospect yeah one of the things i find more <laughs> interesting is that you can't just ring up your friends and say hey you want to go for a cup of coffee or for a beer to the pub no that's impossible you have to actually bring your diary up and then say mm, i'm not available until this day in three weeks time you know <laughs> or like do a doodle poll or something <laughs> like that you know and then <laughs> you have to take oh, which one? it is ridiculous yeah. but it's not like that, doodle polls know? yeah exactly yeah. and then you, you think you found <laughs> the perfect date <laughs> and then the last person to fill it out is like no i can't do that exactly. one exactly <laughs> It's just so difficult. So, but I mean, yeah, it takes a lot of effort. But I think it's, I'm trying really hard to like meet with friends yeah. and to go to concerts more than I used to because mm-hmm. it's very important. Yeah, it's always worth it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. definitely. So, I was reminiscing on how we know each other and we met in 2013 doing mm-hmm. South Bank Symphonia. Yeah. So, how long have you been in the UK? Uh, since 2009, so more than 10 years. Wow. That was the year I moved to Sydney from New Zealand. Yes. So what brought you to the UK? Studying music college in Manchester. I always wanted to go abroad. I always was trying to find a reason to move somewhere. Because since I was very little, I grew up in a very, very tiny village and in the south of Spain. And I always wanted to like um, see other cultures, meet other people, learn other languages. I wish I could speak more languages than I do now, but, um, yeah, it never (laughs) didn't happen. So, but I always had like sort of that drive or that urge or that energy that was like pulling me, you know? And, uh, so the opportunity appeared in when I was living in Madrid and then I did the audition and I got in and it was great. And I was meant to come for a year and I'm still here. Oh, (laughs) yes. You the same, right? Yeah, you were meant to come for life. We're still here. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's it's very attractive. There are lots of great things yeah. about living in this country. And, you know, uh, you meet a lot of great people. I don't think we would ever met if... No. You know. Yeah, unless I... I mean, if you were still living in the south of Spain and if I was still living in Auckland... How what would, are the chances, yeah. Like, how would we cross paths otherwise? <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> it's, just, it's great, you know. I met people like you and I'm from all over the world and I think that is very exciting. Yeah. We, I find it very we had a particularly diverse South Bank year, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't they count and there were, of the 33 players, we were from mm-hmm. 17 different countries? Yeah. We had, yeah, we had everything. Yeah. Not everything. We didn't have... Do we have any South Americans? Central Americans? No, oh, we didn't. Not now, yeah, but I think there have been a few in other yeah. years. Yeah, but we had all over Europe and Australia, New Zealand. Did we have any? Uh, no, US? Aus- no Australians no now, Australians. yeah. Ah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> don't I don't sorry. remember, a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> being in the UK, being in London, Manchester, like big thriving cities, is mm. a wonderful place to experience other cultures. Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. It's just great. As you said, there's uh, a lot happening all the time. So you can pick and choose. But you have to have the energy to pick and choose. That's the yeah. problem, right? Because yeah. we end up like working all the time. Mm-hmm. Like I work six days a week. Yeah. Literally. Really? Yeah. What's your day off then? Today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> Thursday. Oh, thank you so course, much. You're welcome. It's, spending, it's wonderful. <laughs> spending your day off with me. Yeah. An hour and a half of, of it in the car. Of course. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's great. I love it. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, that's what you end up doing, no? Because you have to pay for so many things yeah. and everything takes so much time to, you know, to mm. go from point A to point B. And But yeah, but I think you just have to like, if you're passionate about what you do and if you know what you want to do in life, if you can find that sort of drive, then it's fine. Of course, there yeah. are days that you're like, oh my God, this is so hard. But <laughs> it's, um, I do feel like most of the time blessed for what I do. Like, yeah. I love doing what I do. That's very true. If you love what you do and you're dedicated and driven enough, you'll find a way yeah. to make it work. Definitely, you'll find yeah, yeah. like-minded other individuals to work with, to collaborate, yeah. to make things possible. Exactly. You never know where. And I it's love that. Yeah. What you just said. And I, I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I try to do that every week. I meet up with friends. I recently started two improv bands where we meet like completely different people. Some of them don't even know. Like, they're all from the scene. and But we just like meet up and have a great time, a couple of hours, like trying sounds out and like recording ourselves and, you know, experimenting, exploring. And that makes my week, you know? Yeah. That's the kind of the balance that I find when I have to teach five year old kids the recorder for like uh, four hours straight. So <laughs> that's how I find the balance, you know, because <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> five hours, literally. Lots yeah, of... I mean, I do also. I teach the clarinet, I teach the saxophone, and I teach the record, and I teach musicianship classes as well. So. Excellent. Well, this is the thing about being a wind player. You have to be very versatile yeah, yeah, in yeah. what you do and what you teach. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily I teach only the clarinet. No, no, no. You have to do different things as well. Yeah, you're going to be open minded. You're going to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have, I mean, I, I have, have, sorry. sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I also teach the flute. Although I can't play it very well, <laughs> but I teach the music, you know, you can help some students yeah. with yeah, musicality. Mm -hmm. and Well, this is know. the thing. I find this is more common in this country, teaching an instrument that you don't necessarily specialize in, yeah, yeah. that I never encountered in Australia or New Zealand. Yeah. I only ever taught the cello back yeah. home, but here, the majority of what I teach is cello. Yeah. I have one double bass student. Ooh. But I think I've learned a lot about the double bass through osmosis, yeah. having been married to one yeah. for, for, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for many years. So I feel quite confident in teaching the double bass. But I've had to cover violin lessons yeah. or viola. I know. Or even the odd piano lesson. I don't yeah. even play the piano. Yeah. But there's a lot of that. Yeah. Same, same. In, in Spain, you will never find uh, that situation where you have to... F teach an instrument that you are not specialized on but I think what you just said is very important and I found myself as well in that you know when you are you don't feel confident enough because mm -hmm. you, you just don't know how to you don't you know how to play the instrument well you can yeah. maybe make a sound and if it's a beginner maybe that's enough but I just finding that confidence and just trusting yourself as, as an experienced musician you know and, and Musician, as in not just a clarinet player. I am a musician. Yeah. I am an artist. You know, I, I don't consider myself a clarinet player. Yeah. In fact, I play everything apart from the clarinet when I play with my band. So yeah, yeah. I play the drums. I play, you know, like exactly. Also. You are you are a musician, and you have an instrument or whatever, which is your channel. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think that is really important to teach yeah. children that as well. And the motivation. If you motivate the kid, it doesn't matter if you don't play the instrument, but if you if he or she enjoys the lesson, that's for me, that's the main thing. More than being like perfect or like being amazing at the recorder. <laughs> I love it I, because I just know what's going to happen in like 20 years. You're going you're gonna to be like the teacher to some amazing recorder virtuoso who's like, it all started with my teacher, <laughs> Rothio. There was one kid last week that came for a lesson and he's so good. Like he's proper good. He's only like seven years old, but he's so good. But um, so I just, he just played through three pieces. I literally couldn't say anything. And I was like, I couldn't demonstrate. I couldn't do anything. I was like, I just don't know what to say to you because you're so you're good. So you know, he was good. super prepared. And, Amazing. and yeah, so, but he liked my lesson and he booked another lesson for this Saturday. So that's great. That's you know? great. That's how they get hooked. Yeah. And... <laughs> Hooked on the recorder. <laughs> I will. Maybe I can trick him to get um, into clarinet or saxophone. <laughs> yeah, yes, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. See that recorder you're holding. Just yeah, put just that to one side. <laughs> Look how cool this is. <laughs> Look at this reed. Do you? Yeah. 
<laughs> You've never had a reed before. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's my way. Then anyway. you have to like open them up to the whole world of reeds. <laughs> I mean, I well, don't, let's not get into that. Okay? I, don't, I don't really understand reeds, but well, then just... I uh, <laughs> about a year ago I decided to use synthetic reeds, and that's the best thing, uh, the best decision I've made in a long time. Are they normally I, made of bamboo? Yeah, so I just have like a plastic reed, uh-huh. and I don't have to change it. It yeah. doesn't change with the weather, etc. This is boring stuff. It no, I love it because um, I don't know anything about reeds. I'm learning more about reeds. I've right. spoken to double reed players, not right. spoken to a single reed player. Right. Yet. But they are temperamental. Oh, and yeah. you do hear in orchestra or ensembles, you know, you, you'll you get the odd wind player being like, oh, my reed. Oh, yeah. You know, or they do that thing where they go. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah, that, yeah, that. What is, the, what is that that's thing? <laughs> when they try the reed, yeah, the oboes and the bassoons, yeah. <laughs> but that's different. You see, the double reed is different to the single reed. Oh, yes. Moving along. So, so yeah. you mentioned that you're into experimental music. I feel very kind of blasé about this because when I wrote to you in the email initially, yeah. I said all the stuff about modern music, new music, contemporary music, but you're so much more specific than that. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. experimental, it's improv. Mm-hmm. So can you tell us a little bit more about what you do down that avenue? Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm not the right person to say anything about this, but I just you. do it because I love yeah because I haven't studied I, I just go into it oh um, but I mean you know I'm not very matter. academical about it I don't know how to express I'm not here for an academic okay sorry reason <laughs> <laughs> great so I love it because it makes me feel challenged all the time and I love that I love the challenge I love the the discovery new things constantly like I'm not saying that if you play Mozart or Beethoven or Brahms it's not exciting i'm just saying that there is a a a level of edge or a level of um, something different that really really drives me towards it and uh, so for example free improv you can do i know it can be also rubbish obviously but if you're with the right right uh, people you can create something super cool if you listen to each other it's like having a conversation like now Mm -hmm. you're just asking me questions and i'm telling you something back but this is the same it's like another language it's it's just very exciting i'm not specialized in improvisation but Mm -hmm. i do i take all my all the tools i have like all the knowledge in contemporary music all the sounds i know how to make in my instrument or with other instruments with electronics with our electronics with recorders with ocarinas whatever objects anything and you add up or you just interact with other musicians and create something together so they're creating something in the moment i found that Really, really exciting. I really, really like. I feel like somehow a freedom. Yes, you know. That I was going to say that yeah. because I imagine when you go, get on stage and you've basically got this blank canvas. Yeah, upon which you can just paint with yeah. any colors at your disposal. Yeah, right. And so I imagine there is that freedom to just do whatever you like in the yes. moment. As yeah, you said. yeah. I mean, as I say, there are moments that might not be super inter- interesting, or you might be. I always try to imagine myself when I play, if I were in the audience, how would I feel listening to these sounds that I'm creating mm-hmm. in, in the moment, in yeah. the spot? So it's not like you're just there on your own being selfish, no. Like, yeah. But it's just me and this is my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. I, but equally I do, with my band, we do very highly intellectual, super complex stuff. Do you want to say the name of your band? Yes. Distract Fault Ensemble. So we do, we, we've grown a lot. Like we started doing more contemporary music, like typical contemporary music, if you want to say that. Notated yeah. compositions. Yeah. And everything we play is notated. Mm-hmm. It's not improvised. Some element, elements sometimes, but every, that's why I say it's intellectually demanding because everything is written down and it's very specific. But we are playing music by living composers, which is great. You can collaborate with them. You can create the piece with, along yeah. with them. Or they might have written the piece for somebody else and then you can contact their composer and just have a conversation about the piece. Or it's just, I find that great. Like that you can create something really real, like the closest to what the composers had in mind, you know. So, and every single score we play is a different world. It's just crazy. Like the way it's written, the sounds that we make, like everything is like constant exploration. And, you know, Mm. I I just love that. I imagine it must make you realise how much more there is out there Mm. in terms of 
experimental music, modern music, contemporary mm. music. So what do you say to people that are the haters? You know, you're always going to get haters. Haters yeah. going to hate, as they say, the people who perhaps aren't as experienced in this kind of music or maybe some people who have taken a bit of time to listen to it, but they just will say, I hate all new music. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like when I was little, if I said, I don't want to eat this, and my mum would say, but you haven't tried it. <laughs> How do you know you don't like it? So, or if you go to a museum and you have, you see an amazing, super abstract, colorful, whatever, something that just gets to you and you have no clue how and why or when and it's just it just happened so open your mind maybe <laughs> open your mind and give it a go if you still don't like it that's fine mm -hmm. but uh, what i just don't i feel a little bit apprehensive when people close to me that are not musicians they always say oh can i come to your concerts and i always feel because it's such an amazing part of my life and it's so personal that I really want them to enjoy it as much as I do mm -hmm. but I, I can't expect that but I know they will support me even if they don't know anything about it so if they ask me oh what do you do what sort of music what are you going to play and then it's difficult to explain but I think when you're in the spot and you get the energy from the players you get the energy from just the moment the lighting the, the the atmosphere everything counts towards like the the whole experience right mm. it's not the same if you listen to a piece of music in your house and you go to a concert and you listen to exactly the same piece of music played by the same orchestra and the same people and, and then it's just completely different experience isn't it mm -hmm. and so well you know haters is fine you know <laughs> you have your own opinion which is great yeah but give it a chance but give it a go <laughs> give it a chance or at least you know you can say, I don't like it, but don't say, this is rubbish, this mm. is nonsense, this is... Because there is a lot of work behind that, a yeah. lot of hours of rehearsals, a lot of hours of, like, organizing, curating, admin, everything, you know? And this is what people don't see. Exactly. And uh, that goes with any sort of performance, any yeah. concert. It's the tip of the iceberg, yeah. and then there's all that preparation oh, yeah under the surface that people right. don't realize yeah so if you do for example like a concert with an orchestra you sort of have to go there you have to rehearse you have to prepare you have to warm up that's great but there is an, an entire team making all of that happen mm. underneath and yeah. they never get mentioned nobody knows anything about them you know yeah. but when i do anything with my band we do everything ourselves everything we don't have a manager we don't any so curation like preparation if i have a concert i have to go to the venue I have to uh, set up the venue I have to bring this the speakers i have to bring the microphones i have to bring everything i have to then after that i have to rehearse then after that it's a lot i have to do the ticket sales yeah. i have to everything you all know? consuming everything yeah. you know it's, and then yeah exactly and so then i imagine for someone just to be like no i don't like i don't like this this is rubbish it's yeah. it's not really fair to you is it yeah. because there's that lack of respect yeah of for what you do even if it's not someone's cup of tea yeah yeah i guess with haters you gotta respect them <laughs> they gotta respect you you're just asking for their respect yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah what piece would you suggest if you have a piece in mind that could win someone over oh it's just very subjective mm. i could not say I know which pieces get to me and yeah. why, but the same piece to close friends of mine, it's just it's not the same. They just yeah. I, but I yeah. mean, I guess in, in that way that you want to share a piece that really means a lot to you to okay. someone, even if they they might not like it, but just to for them to get a sense of right. what really gets you excited. Yes. Well, there is a close friend of mine and also a member of my band called Sam Salem. And I think his music is one of the most special things I've ever played and experienced. And also from the audience point of view, because I have, um, he's an electroacoustic composer and um, he's, he started writing for human beings only uh huh. Four years ago, three years ago. So, what do you mean by human like beings? he never wrote any music for 
humans to play it. So it was all tape music, pre-recorded sound, all like, you know. Yeah. So because we are crazy in my band, we're always like willing to experiment whatever. <laughs> open-minded. Yeah, open-minded, exactly. <laughs> so he decided to start writing for us. And since then he has written really amazing pieces like at least eight pieces mm -hmm. from duos to like octets so how would you describe his instrumentation or the way he writes well it's all very heavily electronic based like we have all of us have microphones and extra objects attached like transducers or like i've got like a big trombone mute in my bass clarinet with a transducer on the top where that is creating is is it's just really complicated to I don't want to get into uh, technical terms but um, you send me a picture and we'll put so, that online yeah exactly <laughs> so it's really cool because these pieces have all a uh, video that he makes mm -hmm. uh, and also pre-recorded sounds that he makes as well and and then you have a bunch of musicians also interacting with the media as in with the video and with the audio so this is very special. I can't read. You have to see it. Mm. It's, it's online. It's just the recent one that we did was the most recent one was called Midlands. And it's very, very personal because he's from the Midlands. And uh, we premiered that piece in Austria in, in November. And it was an, almost an hour long, but you don't feel like it's an hour long. You know, it's mm -hmm. great. And I cried playing the piece as in because of emotions you know yeah. it's just so beautiful yeah but that's anything. the thing i mean because i think a lot of people they might feel a bit scared or a bit tentative about this kind of music but they need people's personal experiences mm. to be shared with them to open up that door much like how you are doing right now mm. so i'm sure there are lots of people out there that may have never even thought to look yeah. look for music like this yeah but you never know but there is a lot of as I said before, nonsense out there. A lot. I have, mean, this... have you ever performed any nonsense? Not with my band, because that's what the good thing about us. We have an identity. <laughs> we and don't we perform keep... rubbish. <laughs> no, it's not that. Don't get me wrong. Because we have an identity and uh, our aesthetics. And, you know, we have a... some of us decide what repertoire we play because it's what define us as a band and the type of music we do so we would never in terms of like just getting an opportunity or getting money we would never compromise that mm -hmm. which is i love that yeah whereas yeah some other times i had to do gigs playing music that is not very exciting or fulfilling mm -hmm. and yeah i mean yeah a lot <laughs> well yeah a lot out there join the club <laughs> right <laughs> Well, you know, I you was, have to be supportive. Yeah, exactly. And and you got to pay the bills sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was I was talking to someone recently, and and you know, quite often, you have those gigs where you've got to put a lot of work into it, uh -huh. like you were saying before, uh -huh. the preparation beforehand, uh -huh. and you do a concert for not much money or no money sometimes, and then you have <laughs> you have those gigs where it's you don't need to practice at all, turn up amazingly well paid i know and it's tricky sometimes to make that choice I know. you're like what's going to be great for my personal well-being yeah or what's going to be good for my bank account and True. sometimes it just depends on your circumstances at the time yeah i mean i ha i decided long time ago um that i i wasn't going to do music that doesn't excite me because i rather teach more and to pay my um, for my bills and then do what i really love mm -hmm. But also teaching is so valuable because you're in this wonderful position to inspire the next generation yeah, of musicians true. and music appreciators. It is hard though. Like your recorder virtuoso. Oh my god, it's so hard. I can't wait. We're gonna we're gonna be like <laughs> it's gonna be a household name. That recorder oh player. Oh my god, it's been yeah no, it's great. And but the good thing about um, I'm I'm also an experienced teacher, so now I know what I want. And if there is something that I find a little bit difficult. I rather not teach that person or that class or mm -hmm. that group and find something else because it's just a lot. It takes a lot of energy. Yeah, you can pick and choose your teaching yeah, situation. I, yeah, yeah. I'm lucky enough I can do that now. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I've got a lot of money. That's not the case. <laughs> but it just don't you feel like it just it's exhausting, isn't it? It's just like yeah. 
you drains your energy. Everything you have is just boom, gone. Because you're having to feed their enthusiasm, yeah. aren't you? You are having to, you know, the excitement you have for music, you're mm. trying to give to them. Mm. And you are giving and giving and giving, and sometimes you don't always get a lot in return. No. You know, and that can that's the really tough thing. Yeah. But it's really rewarding when you give and give and give and you get a student. Yeah. <laughs> You've recorded virtuoso. <laughs> seven-year-old recorder, yeah. <laughs> recorder maestro, <laughs> when you get someone that is just really feeding off that enthusiasm and you yeah. get so much in return, it's really, yeah. really special. I mean, there are like very few cases, but those cases are the ones that keep keeps you going, right? Yeah. Totally. I mean, I don't know if you have that experience, but... Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, I've got teaching at the moment that is that I really enjoy. Yeah. At the moment, at this point in my life, I feel like I've got the right amount. Right. About six months ago, had far too much. Yeah. Far too much. I feel like that right now. Oh, do you really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because I don't get paid very well. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm like, it will get better. I think I'm in that process of yeah. finding... This is finding the balance. Yeah. And it does depend on your personal situation yeah. at the time. Yeah. I mean, last last year, I felt like I was in a position where like, yes, I'll take on all of this teaching. Uh, I had a particular offer that I couldn't say no to. It was pretty good. But then it was it was really challenging. Right. Like a lot of the kids, you know, they didn't practice. And, yeah. and I found it was the hours were quite taxing. Yeah. And I was also juggling that with my performing career. Mm. And, and your personal and life. My personal life. Because I feel I have no personal life sometimes. <laughs> Here you are on your day off hanging out with Yay! me. <laughs> But well, it's great. I'm catching up with you as well. Yeah, is, you know. I know. Well, this is what I love about doing a podcast. It gives me an excuse to catch <laughs> up with old friends. <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like we could talk about teaching forever. Yeah. I could write a book. Let's not. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about teaching forever. That's another episode. I wanted to get back to um, experimental music uh, and your improv that you do. And you were talking before about how your your band My have band. this identity and you want to do everything in your power so as not to compromise that. Are there times where you find it difficult to agree on repertoire that you wish to perform? We have a clear team within the band who decides, like the curation team decides mm -hmm. uh, the repertoire. If there is one piece that I feel very strongly opposed to, then I can raise my concern and then we talk about it. But generally, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I've never had that. What I find challenging is dealing with some people sometimes, especially when you go on tour, because everybody's life, it's just, it goes in completely different direction, directions, right? Mm -hmm. Like, And we are in a, in a, well, I'm in my mid-30s now and everybody's like either getting married or having a baby or, you know, so... Um, just lives are really, really different and, and difficult sometimes. So we don't live in the same city. Do you so, not? No. So it's, it's, it's especially hard when we have to... Uh, Where do the elves live? So we have two, three in London, but then we have one in Spain, one in Vancouver in Canada, and another one in Wales. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So you're and another one, sorry, I forgot one. Uh, another one in the north of England in Huddersfield. Okay. So yeah. You're properly spread out then. It's, uh, it's tough. It's challenging. And different time zones. So yeah. So the communication. That, yeah. That's yeah. pretty hard. Wow. Sorry. And what, what was your question? Um, my question was, uh, what, uh, what do you do when you have artistic disagreements? There are clear tasks mm. for each member. So as I said, like if there is one, con one specific piece that I really don't like or disagree with the program, I can just talk to them and then, yep. you know, we find another alternative or, or not. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'll play this piece, okay. but we have to do one that I really want to. Exactly. <laughs> Compromising, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that goes with any ensemble. There's always oh, yeah. challenges with working with other people, but you have to make sure you're on the same page mm -hmm. and you have to keep checking that you're on the same page because that can evolve yeah. throughout time and you can have different ideas as you yeah. go along and at different life stages, as you say. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. That is, I find that the hardest, I think, because once we are on stage and when we work together, it's great. We're all very, very different to each other, but there is something there when we get together that which is I don't know maybe our passion for the music we do, our love for the music, whatever. But mm. it just it works. It's like that's the know? one thing that unifies you. Yes, it's, it? and it's great. And then everything else that makes it hard you forget about when you are in that specific moment because it's just 
priceless, I think. Oh, yeah. That's really very nice. Very heartening yeah. to hear. Mm. What's the most unexpected thing you've had to do on stage? <laughs> <laughs> there was something last year I was playing with another group in uh, the Netherlands and the composer brought a huge plastic bag that was supposed to uh, it's like it was like a lung it was a performance you know l- literally performance as in like not just playing like you have to or like acting start, yeah acting a little yep. bit so I was on the floor, lying down with my bass clarinet on top of me with a microphone attached to it so I couldn't make any noise, playing with one hand and then with the other hand I had uh, an air fan, a tiny air fan. Oh, really? Is, is that what you call yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, a fan just a to fan, cool but No, no, down. like the ones that are automatic that you press the button and it's like, it goes like... Oh, I see, yeah. When, you, when it's... Yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah, like people use them when it's like really hot. Exactly. So I had, imagine in the situation, lying down with a bass clarinet, which is super big and super heavy, yeah. with a microphone so you can't move around because it's, everything will pick up, the mic will pick up. And then having to play my instrument and the fan at the same time. And I was emulating a lung. So I was like, like a lung, like with breathing in and and out so it was like okay so you're moving your exhaling. arms up and down so no i yeah. was lying down and then my one of my hands was like doing that um, as in like okay so you're um, waving your left arm exactly the and yep. with the other hand i was like i don't remember which hand was i'm sorry <laughs> but um and then with the other hand i was like just holding my instrument the keys and also and... with my legs <laughs> but it was like quite challenging yeah. yeah and i had to memorize that i had a click track and the composer was telling me like what to do but with like within like three seconds before i had to do anything <gasps> so i had to react really quickly and um, without being in panic mode or anything so i had to like you know what kind of things was he telling you to do like 10 repeats on on the air fan and up and down uh three two one go boom (laughs) 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 for example but that was i mean it looks amazing when you see the picture from outside it's amazing because i also had like neon lights around it Mm -hmm. and it was it literally looked like um it was like a bubble big bubble but it was like literally like it looked like a lung and it was like really beautiful were you the only person on stage no, there was another person, okay. but he was doing he was doing something else. Two lungs. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was something else. <laughs> oh, no. I was the lung. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that was your lung debut. Oh my that's, god! Yeah. That's so I've got lots of stories like these. I can't even. Yeah. I had to play uh, music music boxes. You know the, ding, the ding, ding, ding. yeah. But yeah. like I had to learn that part within like two hours before the, con- the concert what because you, the person who was meant to play that part oh. couldn't come. So I had to learn it like straight away. <laughs> so what do you mean by play the music boxes? So there were, I was playing my instrument, but I had music boxes next to me uh-huh. and I had to like activate different, <gasps> different and ones. I had that scored in my part, in my, you know, in the music. So it wasn't yeah. like random. Mm-hmm. So. And, you know, I've acted as well. I've done like, I've memorized pieces that I had to like act, yeah. phys- you know. Well, so. it's a whole encompassing performance yeah. isn't it it's not just the, the yeah. sounds that yeah. you're making <laughs> i love Play the drums a lot oh uh, yeah symbols uh, bows bowing the cymbals oh. with double bass bows oh really yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah great you can check uh, our website <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can see me doing lots of crazy weird stuff Amazing. <laughs> very diverse skill set yeah. oh yeah yeah i mean it must get to a point where you're like yeah this is I love, love it. Love, nothing phases me anymore. Yeah, I this love it. <laughs> like, it's great. Last time I, the last concert we did was three weeks ago here in London and BBC was there. BBC Radio 3 was recording us and uh, I didn't even play my instrument at all in the whole concert. I played the harmonica. Sorry, the melodica. Oh. <gasps> no, the harmonica. The oh, melodica. The- <laughs> Sorry. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so the melodica is like the little keyboard one that you blow into. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it was a piece for, melo- for five melodicas. And uh, another piece that where I play the drums. I didn't even play the clarinet. <laughs> Brilliant. Did you even bring your clarinet? Uh, no. Wow. That was great. Amazing. I'd love to go to a gig where I don't have to bring my instrument. I know. Like, like a cello, right? Yeah, exactly. I know. That'd be wonderful. I mean, I it's, you can see it right there. It's so much space. I love gigs that I don't have to bring my cello. I know. It's, it's very great. rare. I know. I know. <laughs> Then you should get into experimental music. You'll play all sorts of... Yeah, different... right. I can bring a bow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I can bring some rocks from the backyard. Yes, great. Yeah, lots of, there's lots of music written for rocks. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. 
Wow. Thank you so much for that insight. I, I find it really, really fascinating. And Great. I hope that your experiences that you've shared with us will help open the minds of people who are either curious or maybe just want to know a little bit more yeah. about the genre. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. So moving on now, I have the segment in every episode called the wildcard question round. Ooh. Ooh so surprised. Exciting. <laughs> so this is your opportunity to choose what I ask you next from three topics that I present you. Okay. Are you ready for the choices? I am. Okay. We have, whoops, we have what I'm listening to. Memorable gigs, mm -hmm. and if I didn't play the clarinet. <laughs> Can I choose the third one, please? Yes, you may. <laughs> so if you didn't play the clarinet, what instrument would you play? I will probably play the uh, the drums or percussion or something like that, because I need to channel my physical energy oh. into something. Uh, yeah, I am... Uh, a very energetic person and I need to do something with my, my hands or my body all the time. And I'm doing it now with my hands. Yeah, yeah she is. She's fidgeting. <laughs> you can't see it. Can't, I people can't, listening. can stay still. <laughs> and yeah, so probably like do something cool like world music or uh, learn the, the, the congas in Cuba mm -hmm. or go to learn the gabelan in uh, Indonesia, yeah. you know. You know, I did a bit of gamelan when Ooh. I studied in Sydney. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you'd really like it. Can you can you play something? What, right now? Not now, oh. because you don't have a gamelan here. Right? I do not have any gamelan. I've got a lot of other random stuff in my head, as you can see. I don't have any gamelan. But, um, yeah, we, we did have to learn a bit of a sequence, actually. Um, right. I mean, in my class, there were only about 10 of us. Right. But we had to, uh, you know, week by week, we ended up learning quite a large song do you mean um, by sequence like what memorizing like just patterns yeah and, memorizing um, patterns like, right. we'd learn like one thing well first of all it was just basically getting the technique right so you, you play the note and then you dampen it straight away oh. with your other hand so we we learned a small theme and then we expanded on that theme week after week until That's we cool. had we could present like a whole i mean song i'm not yeah. sure if that's the piece? right a piece the whole uh, <laughs> an <Cool. opus. laughs> that's great but what i loved about it is that the gamelan are intentionally tuned out of tune in a western classical sense they're not all the same pitch or particularly concordant with each other right. and that creates this wonderful effect of kind of reverberation and that Whoa. sounds great you can tell me more about it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I just talked for ages and it was your wildcard question. So. <laughs> yes, that's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. What else do you do to channel your physical energy? Well, in, in general, yeah, in my life. In general. Uh, <laughs> teach the recorder. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Hot cross buns. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I dance uh, Cuban salsa. Wow. I try to go every week. And I go to the gym. I like going to the pub. <laughs> I channel my energy very, very, very well and thoroughly in the pub with yeah, my yeah. friends. Yeah. <laughs> Through vessels of yeah. beer. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. And also, well, like going to the pub is a way to channel just like your inner thoughts and your yeah, emotions, isn't course. it? That's good for your well being. I love hanging out with my friends. It's one of my favorite things yeah. ever. Yeah. Like now. Oh, <laughs> awesome. We don't usually do it with microphones in front of our faces. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for that. Um, and thank you so much for being on the podcast. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Where can people find out more about you and follow yourself and the band? You can visit our website called distractful.co.uk, I think it is. But if you put Distractful Ensemble on Google, it will come up. And we have everything there, videos, audios, live performances and future performances, past performances, pictures of us, information about us individually and as a group, da 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 da, da all of that. <laughs> and hopefully, coronavirus pending, you'll be coming to a location near you oh, someday. Oh in the yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Great. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you. That was my face-to-face -face chat with Rothio. Thanks for being awesome, Rothio.
I decided to flag music college didn't prepare me this week because it kind of encompasses everything right now. It's been interesting to hear what you've all been up to with all this free time on your hands. Reading, exercise, learning new skills like sign language, cooking or knitting. One person did say crying. I feel for you, buddy. A friend of mine is playing through a sonata a day. I myself have started growing my own vegetables, seeing as I may have to live off the land soon, and have acquired some more houseplants. And I haven't killed anything yet. I think one thing that's rather prevalent on a lot of musicians' minds is the sudden prospect of online teaching. My friend Dan sent me a video of his impressive setup, involving multiple iPads, a mounted phone as a camera, a fancy new book of studies. I mean, I knew online teaching was a thing, but everyone is forced to do it now. And it's a whole new approach. I mean, I say this, I haven't actually done any online lessons yet, because I'm just not on it currently. But... I imagine you have to be so much more efficient with your communication. You've got to come up with new ways to demonstrate or explain certain concepts. And the tech. Oh, the tech. I hadn't even heard of Zoom until a couple of weeks ago, and now we're having parties on it. I've seen a lot of discussion on social media about the best mics and cameras for this and that, and funnily enough, a lot of people are sharing articles that are intended for setting up your own podcast. So I have a lot of that kit already. <laughs> Smug. Too bad I only have one private student. How's lockdown going for you? What have you been doing with all your spare time? Though, that being said, even though I have all the time in the world now, somehow I have left this to the last minute and I'm recording on a Thursday night for Friday morning release. Typical. Why do I do this to myself? If you have something you'd like to share or have discussed on the podcast, then let me know. As it comes podcast at gmail.com. That's it for today. Special thanks to Roz Nagy for my logo and Daniel Elms for my jingle. Huge thanks to Rotheo Bolaños for driving all the way down to South London to have a chat. It's so much fun and wish we could do it again. Hopefully soon. And as always, thank you for listening. Always great to hear from you, so do get in touch at asitcomespodcast at gmail.com. Like and follow the podcast and assistant producer Romeo's latest hijinks on Facebook and Instagram at asitcomespod. Currently trying to get through the cat flap, having difficulty with his microchip. You gotta push through with your head, buddy. Remember to rate and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you think you know anyone who'd like a new podcast to listen to in lockdown, tell them about me, would you? Look after yourselves and stay at home. Chat to you soon. Bye. <music>